What's going on, everybody? It's your boy C4 here, and today on Top 10 Tuesday, we're going to take an early look at my Top 10 2017 free agency Philadelphia Eagle targets. That was quite a mouthful, but essentially these are going to be the Top 10 guys I think Philadelphia should take a look at in the free agency market in 2017 if you didn't really understand the intro. Um, no honorable mentions. This was kind of um, not really a tough list to make, but I don't really know what the salary cap situation is going to look because if Sam Bradford's gone, it makes some of these higher-end guys potential targets that make sense. They keep Sam Bradford on the books. I don't really know where the money's going to come from, so this may be null and void. But we will jump in right away. At number 10, I'm going with Ronnie Hillman, the running back. Uh, he's currently the running back two in Denver behind C.J. Anderson, but at times he's shown flashes that he could be a starter in 2015. He had 970 yards and seven rushing touchdowns. And, uh, you know, where Philadelphia kind of has some question marks over the backfield. Like, is are they going to bring Darren Sproles back? He's getting up there in age. Is Ryan Matthews worth the the risk and the gamble that he's going to stay healthy throughout the season? Are they going to roll with a Kenyon Byrne or a Wendell Smallwood? Or you could look at getting a guy like Ronnie Hillman, who I think would strive in a Philadelphia Eagle offense. He can catch the ball. He can. I don't know about blocking, blocking so much, but uh, I think he'd definitely be worth a shout if we decide to clear house at running back and look to add a new face. I think Ronnie Hillman, still, he's still kind of young, too. We're not really getting an old, banged-up back with a lot of injury history. He would make a little bit of sense here. So that's why we have him coming in at number 10. Look at number 9. It's going to be Michael Floyd, the wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. Currently a wide receiver 3 on Arizona. It's debated who's higher, him or John Brown. So it kind of goes back and forth. But because Michael Floyd has struggled to stay on the field at times, I would say John Brown's number 2, and he's number 3. But he would definitely be... Uh, more depth to our, our uh, wide receiver core. In 2015, he had 52 receptions, 850 yards, and six touchdowns. So certainly not an absolute game changer, but I think he will be a good middle-of-the-pack signing where if we want to move on from Josh Huff and not resign Reuben Randall and maybe the Aguilar experiment's not working out, Michael Floyd would certainly be worth a look. He has great size, great speed, and if he can stay healthy, I think he could definitely be a great complement and a great tandem with Jordan Matthews for the near future. So that's why we have him at number nine. Looking at number eight, we're going for our only offensive lineman on the list, and that's the only guy that really kind of strikes out is Mike Remmers, the right tackle for Carolina. I believe he's a starting right tackle, but, I mean, the salary cap situation in Carolina is not amazing, and they may not be able to bring him in. So if Jason Peters does retire and they, you know, as the organization decides that they want to move late Johnson to left tackle, maybe we got to get a right tackle. I think Remmers, out of everyone that I saw at right tackle, would make the most sense to bring in. Uh, kind of low-key. Uh, was still a starter, though, man. That fucking whole Carolina offensive line was not very weak uh, this Super Bowl season. So I think Rammers could fill a void if we decide to uh, move Lay Johnson to left tackle. He's, in my money, the best right tackle that is set to hit the free agency market. Go number seven is going to be kind of a role player, but uh, fits what Jim Schwartz probably wants to do, and that's Tyron Walker, the defensive tackle for Detroit. Uh, he's kind of, I think, I believe he'd be the, considered the second defensive tackle next to uh, Haloti Nata. Maybe a D tackle three would probably be a safer bet. Uh, 2015, he was hurt. In 2014, he had two and a half sacks, but he's definitely a, a very big. Dis he, he likes to disrupt the pocket a lot, and I think a lot of Detroit Lions fans would think that he is underrated. And uh, more, it's just more though. This pick makes sense in an area we may be lacking depth, and he's a Jim Swartz player, so uh, put him on this list. Going number six, another Jim Swartz player, a guy with a much higher ceiling that I would be, you know, all over, and that is Devin Taylor, the defensive end. He's currently, you know, he's in the mix. He's in a rotation with the defensive ends there in Detroit. But in 2015, he had seven sacks and 35 tackles. And this is if we decide to maybe cut ties with Connor Byron, cut ties with a guy that's kind of expendable at defensive end and bring in a long range. I mean, he's six foot seven. He's a fucking animal. Uh, this pick would make sense. Uh, just from a death perspective, if we didn't have to overpay for him, we probably would. And let, I don't know, like I said, I'm recording this before the 2016-2017 uh, season starts. So he could be off to a fucking hot start and getting ready to cash in. But he might be one of those low-key signs that we can bring in. Uh, Jim Schwartz guy and maybe uh, just add him to a defensive line rotation. Because I don't know how that rotation is going to look yet for Jim Schwartz. He might want to try to keep everyone fresh, having the most guys on there that are cheaper. Like, he could definitely push his way. If we have a defensive line rotation, he will definitely be a cheaper option than keeping Connor Byron around. That's, that's basically the way I look at it. Uh, one, two, three. All right, now three of the next three are going to be corners, and these are probably the most unrealistic picks, but uh, we will see what happens. At number five, we got Stephen Gilmore, the corner for Buffalo Bills. Cor currently, I would say they're cornerback one. 2015 stats, he had 36 tackles, three interceptions, but as regards one of the better shutdown corners in the entire AFC, I like I said, as of now, I would not be surprised to see Buffalo resign or at least franchise tag. They're probably going to do everything in their power to hold on. And Rex Ryan likes his defensive playmakers. And uh, Gilmore is that in spades. But if he does hit the market, I definitely feel, you know, where Philadelphia has always 
they've they've struck it. They've striked out every corner they've tried to sign. By be it Byron Maxwell, be it Namdi Asma, Kerry Williams, Bradley Fletcher, I would be safe with the next three guys that I'm. T- well, next two guys for sure, uh, including Gilmore, saying that I don't think they would bust. Just from what I've seen from their body of work thus far, I think Gilmore would certainly be worth the high price tag to bring him in. Go number four is going to be Darius Slay, the corner for Detroit. He's the top corner on Detroit's depth chart. 2015, 59 tackles, two interceptions. Again, I highly doubt Detroit lets him walk. Uh, with uh, Calvin Johnson gone, they're going to have more than enough cap room to re-sign him. But who knows? He may want to test the free agency market. Jim Schwartz want to bring in uh, one of his former players. And uh, would make a whole lot of sense. Like I said, him and Stephon Gilmer, I think, would be two corners that I would pay whatever they want, as long as obviously as long as it's feasible, and not feel that it's going to be another name to add to the long list of failed Philadelphia cornerbacks. Philadelphia cornerbacks are becoming like the Buffalo or the uh, Cleveland Brown quarterbacks. You know that guy got the jersey with all the names of all the shitty quarterbacks the Browns have got. You can almost make that right now for free agency corners the Philadelphia Eagles have signed. So I think Slay or Gilmore. We could definitely buck that trend. Now going for the most realistic out of everyone at number three is David Amerson, the corner. Uh, I believe he's corner number two on Oakland. Uh, 2015, he had 54 tackles and four interceptions. I've actually always been a fan of his since college. Uh, I can't remember where he played college at off the top of my head, but I remember that year he had the most interceptions in college. I saw he had most interceptions in college, so he's a playmaker. He has great size. And then he went to the Washington Redskins. I'm not sure what happened there, really. I guess it didn't work out. But he had a big year with Oakland. And this is where I don't think Oakland has the money to re-sign him. He's going to probably want to get paid middle of the middle of the market uh, for a corner. And it certainly will probably fit within Philadelphia Eagles' budget. So I think, you know, for the most realistic corner signing, if I was making most realistic, legit free agency targets, not just my top ones overall, uh, David Anderson would be at the top of that list. He fills an absolute need. I think our corners certainly needs to get strengthened. He has great size. And would certainly be, you know, contention to start without signing him. So I would be comfortable, not as comfortable as the Slayer Gilmore, but I would be comfortable paying him a decent amount of money to come in and help our secondary. Uh, Go number two is going to be Paul Warlow, the inside linebacker for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, starting linebacker for them uh, last year in 2015, 96 tackles and two interceptions. If they somehow let him walk, I think he'd be phenomenal depth to bring in. He could definitely compete. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't know when this is coming out. But I, my biggest worry is our, the health of our linebackers. Hicks injury prone, Michael Kendricks injury prone. So I want that third linebacker. If we can get an affordable guy, someone like Warlow, who's you know he's kind of capped as le- at his level. He's not going to get much better, uh, but he's reliable. He's one hell of a workhorse. Great tackler. Might not be the most athletic, which is why I think he, the Atlanta Falcons may kind of uh, underrate his value and let him walk and test the market. Uh, I think I'd, I'd swoop in right away, man. This guy's a for sure tackler, very healthy, and uh, would bring stability to our linebacking core that it kind of lacks right now because we got some injury prone motherfuckers on that team. And the number one free agency target is not a free agent. Resign Benny Logan. Defensive tackle number two on Philadelphia already has great chemistry with Fletcher Cox. I do not want to disturb that at all. 2015, he had 55 tackles and one sack and run stuffer. He is the guy that will let Fletcher Cox go get after that quarterback. And you know, not be worried. I mean, obviously he's gonna go after the quarterback anyways, but you don't have to be. You could send him on blitzes. Just go for the fucking quarterback because you know Betty Logan is gonna fucking take up almost two goddamn blocks and eat up that run game. Uh, I think he's very, very influential. He's a great character, great presence in the locker room. He's not you know shady off the field or anything like that. He's always from a from a you know a organizational standpoint. If from the Twitters and social medias, he's always seems like the guy that is doing all the stuff in the community. He's always at all the events. He's always the face of the franchise within Philadelphia. Even as, even maybe more so than Connor Brown, who's a guy that does a lot of outreach and public stuff like that. But I think Benny Logan has to get re-signed. I'd be foolish to let him walk. And I don't think he will cost a lot because, like I said, he's they, just think of last year's draft, man. A lot of defensive tackles in last year's draft who were you know primarily run stuffers slip because it's a it's a underrated position. So I don't think we're going to pay a whole lot. He's going to get paid, but I don't think we have to pay him a little, whole lot. Nowhere near what we played Fletcher Cox to stay on the roster, and it has to get done. So, I mean, if 2017 pans out that we can only get keep Benny Logan and then hopefully bring in David Amerson, I think that's a fucking A-plus grade free agency for the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Who do you want Philly to go after? If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. You know what it is. Subscribe to this channel. Bunch of Eagles content for all you Eagle fans out there. If you're not a fan of the Eagles, I talk about every goddamn sports team. So thank you for checking me out. If you enjoyed it, subscribe. And until next time, it's your boy C4. Say peace.